Good morning, everyone. Um, in today's session, we'll discuss what's called introduction to objects and classes. So the chapter is very big. Um, so to give you an idea, uh, what's object-oriented programming? What are classes? What are objects? Um, constructors, private member functions, passing objects. So these are the different parts that involve uh, object-oriented programming or classes. Now, the way this works is that um, think of classes and objects here as a prototype. What is a class? Think of it as a prototype. What is a prototype? The first version of something. And this version of something, you can use it anyway, right? So think of it as, um, let, let me give you an example. When you create a prototype of, let's say, how to uh, construct a house, first you do it on paper. You design it how many windows you want, how many doors you want, the light, how they should be, where the bathrooms should be. Uh, you design one or two bedrooms. And you give this to the developers. Now, the developers would create other copies of exactly the same type of um, objects. So if you give that prototype or blueprint to somewhere, someone in Africa or somebody in Asia or someone in Europe or somewhere else in America, they will be able to take that prototype and exactly uh, develop it from that the look will be exactly almost the same, okay? They can choose different color here, uh, different, you know, uh, roofing here and there. That's not a problem, but the, the, the prototype will still be the same. So the idea of uh, classes and objects follow this, what is called object-oriented programming. So let me give you another example. Let's say you try to create uh, uh, an animal class, an animal class, right? Or a prototype. Now this animal, what are some of the features that most animals have in common? Legs. Yeah? They have legs, right? So you create a class that has legs. What else? Yeah. Tail, right? Ears. Ears. Um, eyes, fur, right? Mm -hmm. But then again, now not all animals have exactly the same thing, right? Yeah. Now let's say you create an animal called a dog, right? Now when you create this class that called, that's called a dog, this class will be able to inherit the parent animal called animal. Okay, we would have what's called a parent and a child, okay, when you create these objects, okay? The original one, the prototype, would, the prototype would be the parent. The one that inherits it will be the child. Or you have the super class, or you will have, and then you'll have a subclass. Does that make sense? Now, the child, let's say in this case, the dog, yes, it will inherit the basics. It will inherit the legs, it will inherit the tail, it will inherit the eyes, and, and, and so forth. Right? But then again, when you inherit, you can add something new. Meaning that the new class would have its own, the way that this animal will make a sound. The way it will deal with its tail, right? It might wag, it might be shorter. Right? The sound will be different. So these new variables, these new, uh, uh, what do you call, behaviors would be specifically new to this, to this animal, but the general ones, it has been inherited from the superclass or the parent class. Does that make sense? And the word I'm using here, inheritance, is a word that is used for object-oriented programming. It's one word that you have to learn. You inherit what existed in the parent class or the, the superclass. Good? So we have the child inheriting the parent. Now, if, let's say, we have another class that's called uh, uh, a camel. A camel would have the same general stuff that, that has what? The parent class, which was the animal. But then again, the camel would have what? It's on other properties, right? And behaviors, like in this case, in the, it would have what? A hum. So you cannot add a hum to the superclass or the parent class because all the animals don't have hums. 
So when the new class called camel that inherits the parent class, you would have your, its own what? State in this case or property, and this is called a hump. Because the, and then again, the way you deal with the legs is different. Even though all the animals have legs, the legs of the, uh, what do you call, uh, the camel will be longer. The tail will be long and so the lips will be long and so forth. You would change this. How about in the case of an elephant? The same thing. The ears will be longer and so forth. The size will be longer. Okay. Even though this animal is inheriting what? The parent class or the parent prototype here. So the parent one, the original one is called super or parent. Does that make sense? And then the one that inherits, it will be called what? A child or a sub. Good? Now, these are called objects. Okay? These are called what? Objects. These objects have what's called a state and behavior. These objects have what? A state and behavior. A state is things that come with it by default. Like what you listed for me earlier, which was the legs, the, what do you call, the eyes, the, the hands, and so forth, right? So this is called what? The state. Another name for it is property. So if you hear the word state or property, or you hear the word data, uh, data property, it means the same thing. Things that come with it by default, the ears, the legs, the hands, the tires, if it was a car or whatever, the, the doors and so forth. And if it was a house, it would be the doors, the windows. So the things that come with it. So it comes with what? The state and behavior. So behavior is what you do with that, with those, uh, with those items. The behavior is what? What do you do with it? So if you had legs, what would you do with it? If you had tires as part of the state or the property, what would you do with it? So that is what? The behavior. So in, in the case of, let's say, if you had a state or property in the superclass that was called uh, a tail, then what do you do with it if you are a dog? What do you do with it if you are a giraffe? What do you, do you understand? So every object has what? A state and behavior. So this behavior is what's called the, the methods. The state is called what? It's called property, and these are basically the variable things that you list, legs, hands, and so forth. Now, what you do with it is called the method. The behavior is called method or a function. So you, you're taking these and doing something with it, basically. The hand will be going up and down. The leg would be, you understand? The tire will be rolling and so forth. The actions that's happening with the behavior, this is called what? Behavior or methods. Okay, so each object has what? The state and behavior. So again, this is what this is going to go to go through. Now, so we have what? This is a prototype. These are these prototype. These class are called objects. Objects have what? A state and behavior. So the the, the subclass or the uh, child class inherits what? The parents. This is a word that's used. Inherits. Now, if you have certain uh, what do you call uh, behavior that existed in the parent class, if you wanted to do something with it in the child class, you override it. You override, you modify what you want it to do. Does that make sense? You, the tire was going forward, you can make it go sideways. Let's say in the new cars, I saw a video that showed a car that was parking parallel to another car, but instead of going back and forth, it just turned the, the, the tire instead of going straight, it went straight 90 degree angle and then went sideways, like somebody going, okay? So you can modify that, right? All right. So that is uh, what this uh, session uh, discusses, all right? So I'm going to go through the slides, which is uh, a bit longer, all right? Abstraction is a software development. It allows a programmer to design a solution to problem and to use data items without concern for how the data items are implemented. This has already been encountered in the book. So the use of the power function, you need to know what inputs it expects and what kind of results it produces. You don't need to know how it works. Abstraction is the definition that captures the general characteristics without the details. An abstract in triangle is a three-sided polygon. Specific triangle may be scalene, isosceles, or a collateral. So data type defines the kind of values that can be stored and the operations that can be performed on it.
you have what's called procedural programming and you have object-oriented programming. So procedural programming uses variables to store data and focuses on the process functions that occur in the program. Uh, data and functions are separate and distinct. On the other hand, the word you hear is OOP or object-oriented program is based on the objects that encapsulate the data and the functions that operates on it. So it's based on what object that encapsulate. Encapsulate means kind of like a data hiding information in the data and the functions that operate on it. Object is software entity that combines data and function that, that act on a data in a single unit, attributes. Another word I told you earlier was uh, uh, state. Another word that's used is attribute, okay? Attributes, the data items of an object stored in a member variable. Member functions or methods, procedures, functions that act on the attributes of the class. So here, it's what's, what's, what's explained here is what I talked about when I was talking about object earlier. We had what? A state and behavior. Another name for that uh, state is attribute. Another name for that behavior is member function or methods. And the objects is what? The prototype, we said, okay? So this is just because different languages use different terms to explain, uh, to give the definitions. So data hiding is restricting access to certain members of an object. The intent is to allow only member functions to directly access and modify the object's data. Encapsulation is the bundling of an object's data and procedure into a single uh, entity. Okay. So here's an object example. You have member variables. So this would be the state or the attribute, okay? our property, and then here would be the behavior. Okay, so these are the member functions. Okay, so you have the square object data item inside, square object function, set aside, set the size of the side, square, get side, return the size. So basically, what do you do with that? Okay, why hide data? For protection. So member functions provide a layer of protection against inadvertent or deliberate data corruption. So you need to know a programmer can use the data via the provided member functions as long as the member functions return correct information, the programmer doesn't need to worry about the implementation of it. So we have what's called a class. So a programmer defined data type used to define objects. So it's a programmer defined data type used to define objects. This is the prototype that we're talking about, or the blueprint. It's a pattern for creating objects. So example, you say string f name, l name. So it creates two objects of the string class. Okay, introduction to classes. So here you have class declaration, how you create. So you have class, then you have class name, and then you have the declaration, and then that's it. So access specifiers. Um, so access specifier, you have used to control access to members of the class. Each member is declared to be either public or private. Public can be accessed by a function outside of the class, and private can only be called or accessed by functions that are members of the class. So you have, you have uh, a class example, you have class square, then you have private, and then the variables that you want it to be private, and then the variables you want it to be uh, pub public. So void set side, integer s, and then side equals s, and then integer get side, you call it a function, and then you're returning the side. So this would be the member function, okay? So the public and private, the way those work is that you just put private and you set everything that you want private underneath of that. Right. And public, everything you want public underneath that. That's right. You have to identify it for each function variable. Exactly, okay? So that's an encapsulation? No, no, this is just a basic class. Encapsulation is just a data hiding. Okay. Everything is one place. You don't want the user, you only let the user know what they need to know. Okay. Now let's say in the case of encapsulation, Let's say you go to uh, uh, some coffee shop, right? Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, whatever it might be, right? Now, when you go there and you order your drink or your food, you give them your card, right? Now, when you give your card, they will swipe your card. Let's say the drink was $5. You might have $6 there, but all they care is that card went through, right? So, and you're like all happy. You lined up with millionaires and billionaires, and here you are going through, kick, kick, thank you, your coffee is ready. Someone else behind you might go through it, and they are caught, beep, beep, their account might be full. But for that, uh, let's say if, if you are a millionaire, for that uh, person that's serving you, what do they call them, barista, mm -hmm. that's serving you, 
let's say if you have a million dollars, they won't be able to say, oh my God, this person has a million. Is there anything I can do for you? Like, you know, they, won't, they, they don't have the chance to, to be nice or bad, basically, because you have money or you don't have money. Because this is what encapsulation is. Data is hidden. They only need to know that I got money in there and I can buy that coffee, even though I got one dollar after this drink. So that's data encapsulation. They only need to know. And so again, when you create that type of uh, function, you let the user know what they need to know. By the way, you only need this information and get that information. Okay. Uh, more access on specifiers can be listed in any order in a class. And so you have class circle, can appear multiple times in a class. Um, if not specified, the default is private. So an object is an instance of a class. What did it say here? An object is what? What is an instance? Huh? Part of it. So remember earlier we talked about pair. No, earlier we talked about parent and a child. So when you create a, 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 a what do you call a, a prototype? We said class. These are what prototypes, right? Mm -hmm. Or blueprints. When you create one, the parent, then. Let's say somebody, a developer comes and he wants to develop a two-bedroom. He will create one instance, two-bedroom, or 10 instances, or 100 instances of that. For a three-bedroom, he will create 10 more instances of that. So the, the child or the subclasses you're creating, these are called instances. Instances that inherit the parent. So in the case of the animal, the dog would be an instance. The, what do you call... Uh, uh, the camel would be an instance. Does that make sense? If you had a class, a prototype that, that was called automobile, if you created a van, that would be an instance. If you created a, a Corvette, it would be an instance. If you created a uh, Volkswagen, it would be an instance. Does that make sense? So an object is an instance of a class, the top class, the parent class. So it's defined just like other variables. Okay? You can access members using the dot operator like this. Okay, you have what's called accessor, get, getter functions, uses but does not modify a member variable. So you have mutator, set, setter functions, modifies a member variable. So defining member functions, member functions are part of a class declaration, can place entire function definition inside the class declaration, or can place just as prototype in the class declaration and write the function definition after the class. Defining member functions inside the class declaration, member functions defined inside the class declaration are called inline functions only very short functions like the one below should be inline functions and get it side and then three times side that's it okay and the inline member function example you have class of square and then you have private and then you have the public part okay so this would be the uh, the inline putting functions after the class declaration put a function prototype in the class declaration in the function definition preceded the function name with the class name and the scope a resolution operator. What is a scope? It's like how far you can get access to. We did define this, right? So basically, it's the accessibility. Can you access it, right? So in the function definition, preceded the function name with the class name and a scope. So resolution operator. So here you have. So the convention is member variables are usually private. Access and mutator functions are usually public. And get in the name of the accessor function set in the name of mutator functions. Suggestion is calculate the values to be returned in the accessor function when possible to minimize the potential for uh, stale data. And then, you know, again, this book provides you with examples, try to run those examples. The trade-off of inline and uh, uh, regular member functions, when a regular function is called, control um, passes to the called function, the compiler stores, uh, uh, stores return address of a call, allocates memory of local variables, Code for inline function is copied into the program into, again, these are the details that uh, uh, that is often used to initialize data members of a class. It's called, autom it's called automatically when an object of the class is created. It must be a public member function. It must be named the same as the class. It must have no return type. So this is the constructor, an example of a constructor. Okay, so this was the inline, and then basically the creation how you declare outside. Overloading constructors, a class can have more than one constructor. So overloaded constructors, a class must have a different parameter list. So you can have a square uh, without a parameter, you can have another square without, with just one parameter, 
you can have another square with two parameters, you can have another square with three parameters, you can have another square with four parameters. These are what's called overloading, okay? You have what's called the default constructor, uh, can, can have any uh, number of parameters, including none. So a default constructor say, what that text, no argument, uh, either due to no parameter, all parameters have the default values. So object composition occurs when an object is a member variable of another object. It's often used to design complex objects whose members are simpler objects. Even think about it in terms of math, how compositions work. Okay. So define a rectangle class, then define a carpet class, and use a rectangle object as a member of the carpet object. Remember, you say f of g of. So you have this function inside another function. So if you define a rectangle class, then define an add carpet class, and use a rectangle object as a member of a carpet class object. Okay. So you have the carpet class, and then you have the rectangle class, and then you have your member functions. Okay. So separating class declaration member functions is definition, and the program that uses the class into separate files uh, is considered a good design. Using separate files, so place class declaration in the header file that serves as the class specification file. Name the file with .h. Okay. So place. Uh, member functions definitions in a class implementation file, name the file name that uh, cpp. This should include the file specification of file. A client program or client code that uses the class must in, use include the class specification of the file and compile linked with the class implementation file. Okay. And then some of the guides you can use. So use to prevent the header file from being included twice and its format. Format. So what should be done in inside versus outside the class? So class should be designed to provide functions to store and retrieve data. In general, input and output should be done by functions that use class objects rather than by class member functions. Objects called structures, uh, structure program a defined data type that allows multiple variables to be grouped together. And then an example of that, you have a struct, struct name, select your name and then type one and then whatever the field is. When you see the word field here, we're talking about the state or the property or the, okay, or the attribute. Okay, some more examples. And then some declaration notes. Structure names commonly begin with an uppercase letter. The structure <coughs> name is also called the tag. Let's see, multiple fields of the same type can be in a comma separated list. Okay. Fields and structure are public by uh, default. So that it includes the function analysis includes identification of objects and classes, definition of each class attributes. So objects and class, right? Identification of that, whatever those objects and class are. Then the definition of a class attributes, what's that? This is the state, okay? The property, the, attribute, the hand, the legs you were mentioning earlier. The identification of each class is behavior. The methods, the functions you do, what do you do with these? The definition of the relationship between classes. Which one is the parent? Which one is the, uh, the child and so forth? Consider the major data elements and the operations on these elements. So candidates include user interface components, menus, text box, IO devices, physical objects, historical data, the roles of human participants, so define class attributes. Attributes are the data elements of an object of the class. So this is the state. They are necessary for the object to work in its role in the program. Define class behaviors. For each class, identify what an object of a class should do in the program. So the behavior the behaviors determine some of the member functions of the class. Then you have possible relationships. Access as use uses a or ownership composition has a inheritance is a so these are the relationships you have to consider between classes we are talking about okay finding the classes technique is write a description of the problem domain objects events is related to the problem this is when you're creating the class anytime you have to create a class okay list the nouns noun phrases and pronouns these are all candidate objects okay define the list uh, to include only those objects that are relevant uh, to a problem. Daniel, in the assignment that you have to look at, um, this is what you have to do for your class. 
determine class responsibilities or class responsibilities. What is the class responsible to know? What is the class responsible to do? Use the define, uh, use to define some of the member functions. Object reuse, a well-defined class can be used to create objects in multiple programs. Remember the way you define it. We said a class called animal, then other class can be can inherit that. By reusing an object's definition, a program development time is shortened. So one goal of object-oriented programming is to support object reuse. And screen control programs to date have all this program to date all have displayed output is starting at the upper left corner of a computer screen or upper window output is displayed on the left uh, to right line by line. So computer operating systems are designed to allow programs to access any part of the computer screen. Such access is, uh, is operating, operating system specific. So on screen control concepts, so an output screen can be uh, thought of as a grid of 25 rows and 80 columns. So zero is at the top screen. So again, this general concept of the defining 